Hi everyone, welcome to Girls for STEM. Remember, we are here to encourage girls to pursue STEM. We are here to acknowledge other scientists who have navigated this sector. And we are here to connect these girls to the industry, the endeavors, so they can understand more about STEM and the new technology. Today, we are privileged to be talking to students in Malawi. The school is Camp Eagles Private Secondary School. The school is located in Dangwa, along the shores of Lake Malawi. Please enjoy. Students had interesting questions about STEM. Enjoy. As you can see, the, the students. Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, hi. Hi. Ah, uh, one second. I just wanna, I was just testing something. Okay. Okay. Hi everyone, good afternoon. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm just so privileged to be talking to you guys. So just let me know when we can start. Yes, uh, we can start. Okay. So so, so, so uh, what, we, what you see here is um, the students uh, from Camp of Eagle Secondary School. Yes. Uh, in Form 1, uh, Form 2, up to Form 4. Yes. And also in here, uh, the teachers as well. I mentioned that we have about seven teachers. Okay. Or eight. Yes. Yeah, so they are all here. Um, I just gave them a brief introduction of the, the, the program that we are running. Yes. And they expect more from you. Yes. Yeah. So over to you, uh, Kirsten. All right. Thank you so much. So I just want to tell you that I know a little bit of uh, Nyanja. So Muli Buanji wants a Muli Buanji. Na kondwe la maningi kukuti nikambe. I know a little bit of um, Nyanja because I grew up in Zambia. That's where I grew up. And then I went to United States. So um, I remember very well, uh, my parents came to Malawi. They came to Malawi uh, when I was about 10 years old and they bought some very cool shoes. And I still remember that. And I have not forgotten. So I'm so excited to just uh, be here to be talking to you as students and also to be talking to the teachers. Uh, thank you so much, Alfeo, for having me. So I am going to start. So what I'm going to do is I, I have a presentation that I'm going to make. And then afterwards, uh, we are going to watch uh, a STEM video. So let me just go through the program, what we are going to do. And then at the end, feel free, you know, to have any questions that you want to ask. So we are here uh, so we can discuss. Okay. So let me just uh, present. Okay. So my name is Kesten. I was born actually in Zambia. I was born and raised in Zambia. And that's where I grew up. I went to school there. And it's very interesting, as I was telling you, my parents actually visited Malawi. So I've never forgotten because when they visited Malawi, they bought us, me and my sister, very cool shoes, as I mentioned, and uh, a dress. And we, we, we were very, you know, we were very excited. And that has never, for, I've never forgotten because those shoes stayed for a long time with us. And I've never forgotten that. So I was very excited to see that I will be talking to you guys. So um, let me talk about how my passion uh, started about engineering. So when I was 10 years old, um, 
me and my brother used to love making uh, toy gadgets. You know, when you make toy gadgets, you go get them from the hill. You know, you get clay, soft clay from the hill, especially when the rain falls. So we'd go get some clay and would make a lot of gadgets, toys, uh, cars. And I remember making the car chassis, you know, the, we used to call it mud guard. It's a, you know, the base of the car. So I remember making that with my brother and we made a lot of toys, but I didn't know that I was being wired to uh, maybe that I might do engineering, but I was very excited in, you know, solving problems, things like that. So it's very interesting, but so I went to school and uh, I went to Evelyn Horn. I did production management and that's where I met uh, Alfeo. And uh, after that, I went to United States. So when I went to United States, I went and did manufacturing systems engineering. Um, so it was a continuation from uh, Zambia when I did production management. And when I came to United States, I had the privilege to actually do manufacturing systems engineering. And at the moment, I'm working as a quality systems engineer I'm working as a quality systems engineer for Northrop Grumman. So I'm sure most of you have been exposed to what is STEM students, but I will go through a little bit. So STEM simply means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And STEM actually births innovation. It births innovation in meaning it's the one that also ensures that there is um, inventions of different types of, uh, you know, things. Uh, so the main thing I want to say is it drives the economy. It's the one that makes the economy start, uh, you know, developing. And it also makes our lives better. So the other thing is invention and technology has evolved in the past two decades tremendously. So that means the world, including United States and Africa, Brazil, everywhere, we are going to need a lot of scientists and we'll need a lot of engineers. So that being said, I would like to encourage you that in the next uh, future, there will be a lot of jobs that will require engineers and scientists. So how do you participate in that? So I would like to encourage you and say, we have to work so hard and be, be encouraged that we, we will definitely have jobs as students in the next future, because there will be a lot of technology and um, a lot of uh, positions for, for jobs. So. And I just want to encourage you that you need to push beyond, uh, you know, uh, beyond your limit and be encouraged. And these are cool things. They are very fun things that are going to be, you know, happening. So we, we will see a video and then you, I'll show you, you know, some of the cool things that you can participate if you pursue in uh, math and science you know, that would be very interesting. And I also wanted to tell you that I know most, of, most people are so afraid of science and math. Um, I just want to tell you, especially about math, that there is nothing else we want to do about math. We just want to see how X is varying. So we always just solving for X. So if you see in your math, we, you're always trying to solve for X. And then later in the stages, when you start going to uh, the university, X just starts changing. And they call that derivatives, differentiation. So it's not that hard. I just want to tell you that even for myself, all I had is determination. That's all you need. You fail, you get up. You fail, you get up. You, you don't do the problem well, you ask. You keep asking, keep fighting. That's all it is because it's a practice. So I just wanted to mention that a little bit. So before we go uh, into much details, I just want to talk about Girls for STEM USA. So Girls for STEM USA is a, um, 
a non-profit organization uh, that, we, that, uh, that inspires girls to pursue STEM and also to encourage them to um, take math and science classes because a lot of people think you know, it's, it's, it's very scary to take these classes. I just want to make sure that everybody understands it's fun actually. We just have to change the way we think about it and it's very fun. So what does Girls for STEM do? So Girls for STEM actually provide inspiration for girls to pursue engineering, also boys. You know, we are in the same category. The only thing we are trying to pull more girls, it's because uh, of in the past years, most of this is only performed by, uh, engineering is only performed by uh, boys, men. So that's why we want to encourage girls to pursue STEM. So the other thing that uh, girls, for, girls for STEM does is it provides mentorship to encourage these girls to pursue engineering and also to show that there are models like me who have uh, pursued engineering. So that's why I would like to be as a model to the girls that there is nothing you cannot do. You are just like anyone else and you can do it because I did it. The other thing is we offer programs. These programs encourage the girls to be able to think scientifically, to be able to do projects that are fun and also present them. We also provide shared resources because uh, most of the time students, teachers and mothers, they don't know how to access this resource. And we live in a place where there, are, there is internet, remember? So we have access to a lot of resources that we might not know. So as Girls for STEM, we would like to provide these shared resources to teachers, students, and also mothers so that they can have the opportunity to access this information and also be able to be encouraged to pursue engineering. And that's what Girls for STEM does. The other thing is we'd like to provide scholarships so that these girls can continue in the STEM and also expose the students to endeavors. As I mentioned earlier, you know, the resources and the technology and things that are happening most of the time, you know, it's very difficult for students, teachers and mothers to know exactly where this information is. So we harness this information so we can provide it to to you guys. So that's what Girls for STEM is. So now we... So here's a good question. What do you want to be when you grow up? You can think about that. So the best thing you can do is think of what you want to become. You can write it down, wherever you want to write it down. Find out what it takes to accomplish it. Start working on it daily, every single day. So questions to you all. Do you know how many types of engineering are there? There are so many types of engineering. So these are the types of engineering that are there. There's mechanical engineers, aviation engineers, robotics specialists, actual scientists, renewable energy engineers, aviation engineers, quality engineers, that's me, electrical engineers, software engineers, computer science engineers, civil engineers. The list goes on and on. It's a very long list. So what do you want to become?
So if you have any questions, I'm ready, you know. Hi. Hi, how are you? What's your name? My name is Miss Tomo. What's your name again? Tomo Bodu. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. I want to know more about civil engineering. Oh, okay. Uh, speak louder so I can hear you. I want to know more about civil engineering. Which one? Civil engineering. Civil. Oh, civil engineer. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes. So civil engineers, they are the ones that makes our lives better. I like starting by that. How? They are the ones who build bridges, houses. They are the ones who built actually the school that you are in. They design them. They, they make sure we will this house uh, stand for how many years, you know? So they are the ones that makes structure. Uh, they are involved in creating any structure things that can stand for a long time, you know? For example, how much weight can stand on um, certain structures? So those are civil engineers. What they pay attention to, they pay attention to building bridges, building houses, building tall buildings. Those are the ones, those are civil engineers. It's very interesting career as well. Okay, fine. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Priska. Nice Priska. to meet you, Priska. My question is, how can I manage to be an engineer? Yes. Woman, you who have the confidence in yourself. Yes. I'll tell you something. It's, that's a very good uh, question, and I like it because... Um, when you become an engineer, guess one thing that makes you very confident. Number one, I always say this, it's a high paying job. You can imagine, you know, when you are, you are good, you are getting good, you know, payment, you feel good, right? So it's a very high paying job, number one. Number two, the product that uh, the world is making needs a female touch. If, imagine, products just being made by men how can i how can they understand some of the things that we women feel or what we want so being a female engineer will empower you to understand that you are also sitting on the table where they are making decisions about products that they are making and that you are part of that and also you are making those products for uh, on behalf of all the women out there so that should give you also confidence. And the other thing I'll tell you, there are very few women in engineering. For example, where I work, I'm the only one. The rest are men. But that doesn't stop me. You know, I want to show to people like you students that you can also be engineers. So we need more female to come to engineering. So I just want to tell you that you may face um, uh, challenges as you pursue this career, but it's worth pursuing. And you will look back and say, wow, I did it. And let me also get a hand of another female to encourage them to do engineering. So I just want to tell you that, yes, you will have confidence. And I want you to show that when you're in math class, it's not only for the boys. Math is for the girls as well. And don't be intimidated how they will say or they will, whatever they react. You have to trust yourself. I like this subject. I want to know more about it. That's all matters. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. Yes. Hi. Hi, how are you? What's your name? My name is Jeff. 
Nice to meet you. What can I do to be an engineer? Yes, that's a good question. So, for example, right now, what grade are you doing? What, what, in what grade are you? In form form, one. Form one. Oh my God, that's really good. So, what you can do to be an engineer, you just have to pay attention to school, push through math and science. Those are the two key areas that you want to, be, uh, to become an engineer. And I want to encourage you that there is nothing difficult about math. Remember what I said earlier on? All we do is what happened to X. That's all I, I, I tell everybody. That's the only thing math is all about. What happened to X? 2X plus 3X equals, and then later on X will start changing. So just follow that X what's happening. You will see, you'll be like, oh, that's it. So I just want to encourage you that do your math it's going to be hard sometimes, but just because it, it's hard, it doesn't mean you should give up. Can I tell you how many times I failed? I did fail so many times. But guess what kept me going? The determination. When I fail, I want to know why did I fail? How else can I do this? And then I go ask the teachers. And I'm not afraid to ask teachers. All the time I am in their faces. That's what I do. Can you explain this? Can you explain this? How can I do it next time? You know, what kind of exam are you going to bring? Is it something to do with this subject or this subject? Did I study enough? Do you think I'm ready? So just keep asking, keep asking. I think teachers love when we ask them. So that's what I can say. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi, how are you? What's your name? My name is Elizabeth. Nice to meet you, Elizabeth. I have a question. Yes. What can I do to become an engineer? Yes, what grade are you doing? Huh? What grade? What are you in form one or form what form are you doing? Form three. Oh, so you are almost there, right? So Again, as I was explaining on uh, when she asked me also, it's the same thing. So all you have to do is make sure you can do well in math and science as well. I, I would like to encourage you that they are not difficult uh, courses. All you have to do is be determined, you know, pay attention and also do a lot of research because that's what uh, scientists do and engineers, they only, they solve problems. So you have to be uh, self-driven, trying to find out how did I solve this problem? Did I solve it nicely? Did I do this, you know? Also science, same thing, try to read. You know, nowadays I was just explaining later on, there's internet, there's YouTube, there's a lot of information out there for us to learn more and more. So keep pushing. And then when you get to the end of uh, your form four, you know, you apply for college. And sometimes don't worry if you don't go to university. It doesn't mean your life has uh, ended. I'll tell you, when I was in Zambia, I qualified to go to uh, Evelyn Horn College. I didn't go to the university. But you keep pushing. So one step at a time. But you know on your mind what you want to become. And it's an opportunity, you get to the next level, you keep fighting, you keep fighting. Finally, you get to where you want. You just don't get to one place and say, oh, I'm done. No, you are still young, you can fight, fight, keep going, keep going. And that's how you can become what you want to be. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? What's your name? I'm Daniel Mouse. Oh, nice to meet you. So what happened for you to be there and get an opportunity like that? Yes. So what happened to me was, um, remember, I was born and raised in Zambia, right? Just like you. And then I went to United States. When I went to United States, I... There were two choices. 
I can either just sit and become who I was, or I can utilize the opportunities around me. So you also have opportunities around you. The teacher always talk about, you know, pay attention to school, try to look around, you know, what do you want to do in your life? You know, you can play, have fun, but at the back of your mind, you have to know what you want to become. And it only starts when you are young. And you can, you know, talk to your teachers, your teachers, you know, know more. So they can guide you. Those are your mentors. They can guide you and help you, you know, uh, process things around. So when I went to United States, I decided to uh, pursue manufacturing systems engineer. You know, it was not easy. As I'm telling you, all is needed is determination. Determination, that's all matters. You cannot fail with determination. No matter how many times <clears throat> you may fail or you, no matter how hard it is, you will succeed. So that's all I did for me. I utilized the opportunities that were around me and the determination. Thank you. You're welcome. Kenton, hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. It's a pleasure. You have proved to us that real science is paying and I have to convert it. Yes. Thank you for, for being in the USA. Oh, yeah, thank but you I have so a question which I want to ask. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I have two questions which I need to ask. Okay. Uh, as an African student who has ever attended African education. Yes. And the, we talk about science. Uh, science is one of the major and the very difficult to be taught in Africa because of lack of it. Yes. Now, uh, you have been there in USA. Yes. Where my children are there. Yes. And sometimes learning is also very, very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, them, what are you planning for African students? Yes. Because you are there promoting girls participating participation in their science uh, subjects. Correct. What plans do you have for this? Wow. Yeah. You and then, yeah. Can I go ahead? Yes. Uh, actually, you've just touched my passion right there. So as Girls for STEM, I would like to partner with schools so that we can be mentors for these students and to also provide shared resources to teachers as well as students. So that's my passion and that's why I'm here because I have a heart from where I come from. And uh, I would like to partner with schools if they can let me. And this is to also help them, you know, also provide these shared resources to them so that these students can be at a level where they can be inspired and also to provide uh, necessary, you know, resources that can help teachers navigate how to uh, approach STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to students. Yeah, thank you for uh, your answer. I think uh, we're looking forward. Yes. And I'll be very happy if your program of uh, giving resources to schools is to start with the, our own school. Yes. <laughs> yes, so, definitely. Our school. I'll be here. I'll be happy to see that. No, okay. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, graduation for the NAS, I think they had a program. I think it successfully landed in the mass. Yes. So I think for that, it's a good news. All the best. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi, good afternoon. What's your name? I'm sorry? My name is Zan Homa. Okay, yes. Nice to meet you. I wanted to ask about the locus. Yes. How much gallons of fuel does it take for a rocket to come out from Earth to the space? Yes, so that depends on the weight. There's a formula. So the formula 
that scientists use and engineers for the rocket to, uh, to actually get up from where it is, it has to exceed uh, the force of gravity. So you know there's force of gravity that's making everything sit on Earth. So in simpler terms, that fuel has to be able to exceed the velocity to be able to get up. So it depends on the weight of the things that the, uh, 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 the uh, rocket is carrying, the weight, uh, you know, there's a lot of things, calculations that need to be done. So it's not just the one thing. So it's a lot of fuel, actually. It's quite a lot of fuel. But I just want you to know that there's a calculation. I can give it to you, but it won't make sense now. <laughs> but it's a calculation that is done for to be able to lift a certain type of vehicle from the ground so that also will tell you the amount of fuel needed not only that you also need the fuel if it's going to come back right so there are two components you need the just amount of energy so you you convert the fuel fuel is converted to energy so the calculation i'm talking about it's the calculation that calculates the amount of energy needed to be able to lift that rocket up in the sky and shoot it. Also, the calculation of the distance, how much do you want it to go? You know, for example, the rocket Persevere went to Mars, but some rockets just go to space station. So those are two different places, right? So you need different calculations for each time, wherever that rocket is going. And I have one more question. Yes. How many G-forces does the astronauts get when going on, on coming down from Earth to go to space? How many G-forces do they experience? Gravitational force, how much do they experience the astronauts? The, okay, so the, the first gravitational force is the, uh, nine point uh, nine point eight, right? The one that's just the gravitation force, yeah. So the, that's one G. That's one of the uh, Gs. But there is also uh, some other Gs that they experience, and that has been has has been calculated already. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they are, but yes, that's a very good question. They do experience G forces. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello. Hi, how are you? What's your name? I'm Mrs. Suwale. How are you, Mrs. Suwale? Better than I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I have one question. You talked about scholarship. Yes. I'm interested in this program because you are talking about girls. Yes. You talked about scholarship. Mm -hmm. And my question is, when is that scholarship going to be offered? Is it now as they are doing their secondary education that you can offer something for them, supporting them? Or you are already having connections whereby we can select the students who are very much interested in this program of science so that we can connect them to you in order for them to have a very good follow-up. Yes, so what's going to happen is we first have to partner with the school and then it's a process where we can identify those students and then we can move forward from, from there. So it's a process first and then finally we can decide who gets what and who gets whatever. So those scholarships, um, it also we also it also depends on our donors. Once the, we have that funds and then we make it available, we would like to make it available to the students, especially those that want to continue in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So yes, um, I, I, I can't wait to start these programs. I'm just like as excited as you. I can't wait to see the eyes of these students when they pursue this career. I thank you very much. You're welcome. That, uh, welcome. Yes.
Hi, how are you and what's your name? I'm fine. I'm Vincent Pan. Oh, nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, I have two questions. Yes. This question is about mechanical engineering. Yes. Uh, why most, most trackers have many tires instead of four? Okay, so the reason why they have more tires, it's the, due to the weight that the truck is carrying. You're talking about the trucks, right? Yes. So I'm not a mechanical engineer, but I understand because as an engineer, we learn all disciplines and then you finally major into your specific uh, engineering. But what I can tell you is the reason it's the force the force of the weight sitting on the uh on the ground so that's why imagine the truck is so heavy with two light wheels what would happen okay. it would definitely crash yeah so that's just to support the traction on the on the on the ground okay. yeah uh, then another question is yeah what happens when the sun, sun misdirection and hit the moon? What happens if what? Sun uh -huh. misdirection and hit the moon. And hit the moon? Yes. That would be a disaster, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Kesken. It's okay. like we have, we have exhausted uh, all the questions that uh, we had. Yes. I don't, so before we close, I don't know if you have some closing remarks. After that, I'll give it to our director, who is the bishop, just yes. to have a uh, uh, few words as well. Then we okay. can close. Okay. No, I just want to say thank you so much, you guys, for giving me this privilege. Again, I just want to say Girls for STEM is here to, you know, uh, support girls to pursue engineering. And I'm just so privileged to be here. And I really, really appreciate it. Hi. Hi, how are you? Great, and how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm Bishop K.P.A. Chingaya. Yes. I'm the director of the school. Okay. Yeah, of course, I think I have to apologize. I was very late. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, but I think in the first actual place, I would like just to thank you. Yes. Uh, for opening this window, uh, especially for our school. Yes. And we are not taking this for granted. Yes that uh, I think in the whole Malawi, actually we have been privileged to have this platform. Yes. So um, I would like actually to thank you once again for taking your time. Yes. And uh, the inspiration and the motivation that you have also instilled to our students. Yes. Uh, we are actually expecting to work extra harder as you have seen the match you're asking what questions yes yes because they are here they want to become actually one of the engineers yes yes yeah but i uh, think finally i would like also just to appreciate because of your uh your presentations yes yes and uh especially that we are sharing the border and you strongly believe that actually our problems around this continent are the same. They are the same. Yes, so I think much of your presentation was do, dealing to do with the online uh, internet. So as actually the school that I've just started. Wow. We are, yes, we are still thriving for that. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would love them to really flourish and just to see how they are doing in uh, 
all these sciences, you know, there's so much to do. There's robotics, there's, you know, projects, you know, how yep. they respond presentation. So it could be a very, very good program for them. Uh, <laughs> finally, once again, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I have watched uh, everything and I was somehow tempted because I'm a pastor. So yes. I was very tempted with you that I'm sure look at you. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> no, thank you so much. So, Kesken, uh, we have uh, come to the end of the session today. Yes. Uh, if there will be anything in future, we will try to organize so that we can continue to, to speak to the, to, the, to the students on science, technology, and innovation. Sure, no problem. Thank you very much. All right. No, thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate for having me. Hope to talk to you soon again. And thank you so much. And bye.